I'm in the process of doing a video on this laser and I've seen a lot of people are having issues with upgrading the firmware. I just upgraded the firmware yesterday and it didn't go super smooth, but I got it done. So I am going to try to redo it today and film it so that it can maybe help somebody out because it wasn't as clear to me uh, how to do the uh, firmware. So let's go ahead and get started. It does show uh, just to plug in the USB-C cable right here to the back of the display. And we're gonna do that first. If I go into their website, click on the download center, scroll down to the laser engraver. And then we're gonna come over here for the Windows drivers. We're gonna do our firmware update guide. We're gonna grab the firmware and we're gonna do the firmware update tool. So those are all gonna download here into a folder. And first thing we're gonna to need to do is unzip all these files. Now that we have the files unzipped, first thing we're gonna to need to do is install the Windows driver to make sure that the machine can see. So I'm gonna go over here to the driver setup 64 exact. I'm gonna click yes to that and then hit install. And then it installed all my drivers. So now that's done. Next, we're gonna to need to come over here to the MKS laser setup tool and install that program. Uh, the Windows protection doesn't want me to do it, but we're gonna do it anyway. Now look at this destination folder and remember where that's at because this does not put in a program file under your programs. Go ahead and we'll pull up our guide and it's got the precautions to make sure you don't brick your machine. It's got the file descriptions and it doesn't say which one of these are your touchscreen and which one's your motherboard files. Now under the touchscreen firmware, it shows to connect the wire right up in here and it's got your settings. It never says which file uh, that you're supposed to download. Although here it has the DLC32 as the touchscreen file. So let's go ahead and open up our MKS exec here. Now I went to the folder, my programs uh, 86 MKS folder, and then I've got the exec right here. So I'm going to run this as an administrator, select the top one like it said. I click on the COM port. There's nothing showing because I don't have my USB wire plugged into the side of my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and let's change this to 4 megabits. And now that I have plugged that in, I've got a COM3. Well, if I select this file here, and which is what it shows on the instructions and i hit start and then i get a fail size error and now my screen on my laser is blacked out uh oh so did i just brick my machine so i'm going to go ahead and turn my machine off i'm going to unplug it i'm going to turn the machine back on I'm going to rerun, pick this back up. I don't have anything. Now, luckily, my screen came back on on my machine. We're going to change this to 4 megabit. Now, I've plugged it back in. I've got my COM3. But let's do the ESP32 file, and we're going to open that up and we're going to start so now we're actually getting it to write in so the file size for the touch screen is four megabits and the file size for the motherboard is eight megabits and the files to me are labeled they should be labeled as touch screen or motherboard are in a separate folder so you know which one's which 
and according to their instructions that they have right here, um, you know, it never says which file is which, and it doesn't say where to go. Um, and in the example, they have the motherboard file under the update of the touchscreen firmware. And then when you come down here for the motherboard file, you know, you don't really, you can't see which file they're running. So I think that that's a um, kind of an error in the instructions. So it says firmware successfully flash, unplug to reset the machine. So I am going to turn the machine off. Now I am going to connect the USB A to uh, USB B uh, to the side of the machine so that we can update the actual motherboard. I'm going to come back in here. I've turned the machine off. Now I'm going to turn it back on. We're going to change this back to 8 megabits. We've still got our COM3 because I plugged into the same USB drive. And then I'm now going to do the DLC32. And we're going to hit start. And we're going to run back through the same process again. Except for now, we are connected with the you know, USB A wire instead of the USB C. The USB C is the one that goes to the touch screen. All right, so now we have the finished screen. So we are going to shut the machine off and turn it back on and double check and see if everything was successful. Yeah, you know, I could have wrote it off as I'm old and dumb and that's why I was having problems getting the firmware updated, but I can follow instructions if I have good clear instructions, but to me the instructions just weren't that clear and hopefully uh, this will help somebody else out because I see lots of videos and lots of messages about people having issues updating the firmware. So if this helped you out, let me know. And until next time, I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon.